Messiah. He's half black, but also means he's half white. And he might also be the first gay president. We don't really know for sure, but he looks a little light in the loafers to me. You're a racist! Racist! Homophobic! Whatever. Eh. Eh. Yawn. You can scream and shout with all your might. Oh, you scream, shout, wine, cry, snivel, piss, and motherfucking moan. You can shove your opinion up your ass. That way Obama's cock has something to keep it company. Either you are wrong or I am right. Don't forget, the ever-present, the most likely, the third possibility. You are wrong and I am right. And more importantly, while you're crying right now about how you need a safe space, there is no safe space. Because see, I am right. I am always right, and I've always been right. I've been podcasting for 11 motherfucking years. Been on the internet since 1999. I am motherfucking the great one himself. And there is no safe space from the cruise missile of my intellect that holds in on and destroys stupid motherfucking statists all around the world. And you, when I say stupid motherfucking statist, don't look, don't look at other people. No, no, I'm talking about you, bitch. I am talking about, I know you, I, 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 I know you are, you are stupider than a motherfucking box of rocks, you are dumber than a goddamn turnip, yes, I am talking about you, greetings my friends and my enemies, this is the first podcast in almost a month, because I've been busy doing this thing called work, creating value for other people, having had time to talk to the microphone. And I am still the great one himself, the founder of Cynical Libertarian Society, on the interwebs at cynlibsoc.com. And of course, the Twitterverse, cynlibsoc. We're on the YouTube. I don't know the fucking address. Go to the goddamn website. It's linked. In the control room over there is the lovely and adorable Randy being seen and not heard the way women should be. You can send us email. You can send us love mail, hate mail, pictures of yourself naked if you're an attractive person. Of either gender, because I like naked women, Randy likes naked guys. So you can send all that stuff and more to God. That's dog spelled backwards. God at cynlibsoc.com. On the interwebs, today is December the 20th, 2015. Ah, Christmas is almost here, and then I won't have to hear Christmas music for another fucking year. Seriously, Christmas music. Why? Why does Christmas music need to exist. It just aggravates the shit out of me. On the subject of things that aggravate the shit out of me, we have newspapers. I made the mistake of looking in some newspapers and finding things in there that I have to make fun of. Today's episode is essentially going to be nothing but me talking about shit from some newspapers and pointing out why I don't read newspapers and why you shouldn't read newspapers either because newspapers are written by journalists. Journalists are people who have college degrees in journalism and of course people who have college degrees in journalism have those degrees because they didn't want to do math. This is a fact. I have evidence. Citation coming up. Hold on. Mm. I also have a martini in my hand. The drink of the gods. Made with Plymouth Gin. I should send them a bill for plugging them. Plymouth Gin. I did extensive testing to figure out which gin was the best. And I'm here to tell you that Plymouth Gin is number one. All right. Let's get started. Except I need another drink of martini. Hang on. Mm. Why do I say journalism majors don't do math? And why do I say that so confidently? I say that confidently because I'm a man. I have a penis. And I like to put my penis inside girls. And so in order to do that, I have to talk to girls and interact with them. And... In the past, I have talked to girls who were journalism majors, and I can't forget, it's been a while, I can't remember if it was three of them or four of them. I've talked about this this in the past on a podcast. So if you remember the story of me telling it the first time, whatever number I gave you the first time around is more accurate because I've forgotten. Three girls, four girls, I don't know. On CSU college campus. 
that I spoke to, and they're all majoring in journalism. Not, I wasn't talking to the same time, but they're all majoring in journalism. And I so I always asked them, like, so why did you choose journalism? And all of them said to me the same thing. They said, because you don't have to take any math classes. I can't figure out why we, I, people, such as myself, make fun of girls for not being able to do math. Can't figure it out. All right, let's get on. Let's make fun of some shit. My mother sent me some stuff from the Houston Chronicle down in Texas, the uh, greatest land in the world, Texas, except, of course, for the government, fascist-ass government, but wonderful part of the country to live in. If we could just get rid of the government, if we just have a libertarian anarcho-capitalist paradise in Texas, that'd be great. But unfortunately, we have this thing called government because all the stupid people vote. Anyway, apparently in Houston, they are, were, I think the vote's already over. I, I don't know if this passed or not. I don't care. I could look on the internet, but I don't care enough. They had Proposition 1, which is Houston's Equal Rights Ordinance. We have an ordinance that's going to give people equal rights because, of course, we all know that rights come from the government. So when you say the government is going to give people equal rights, what you're saying is that rights come from the government. Now, of course, this goes completely against the concept. I've talked about this before, so I have lots of other people in the anarcho-capitalist sphere is you have these idiots who assert, well, we have rights because we exist. Well, no, we don't have rights because we exist. You have rights according to the way the political world is right now today. You don't have rights because you exist. You have rights because you get them from the government. And of course, the problem with this is the government can take them away. As I and other people have said, the only rights you have are the rights you can defend. There is no such thing as inalienable rights, nor is there any such, well, there is such a thing as rights granted by the government. But the idea that these are rights that can't be taken away is, of course, nonsensical because what the government grants is that which the government can remove. Anyhow, apparently Houston's business leaders support Proposition 1 because the ordinance protects all Houstonians. It makes the statement that Houstonians are proud of our multicultural city says right here, it protects every, the word every is in capital letters, it protects every Eustonian from discrimination on the basis of sex, race, color, ethnicity, national origin, age, family status, marital status, military status, religion, disability, sexual orientation, genetic information, gender identity, and pregnancy. It also provides a local option to make a complaint, avoids federal claims where government bureaucracy leads to a costly and lengthy process, and finally it says it does not, the word not is in all capital letters, it does not afford any special privileges for any group of people. Now, anybody with a brain knows that's bullshit. Any and every law that has ever been created creates special privileges for some group of people. I would challenge you to show me an example of a law that does not differentiate between one group of people or another. The law against murdering people differentiates between people who are murderers and people who have been murdered. So we're not going to discriminate against... So any, any this, this thing, to say that this thing does not afford special privileges for a group of people is, of course, untrue. What it does is it creates privileges for the parasites. Because people who are competent and capable and can achieve things on their own do not need the government, do not need politicians and bureaucrats to provide them with special treatment so that they can get the things they want. The only people who are going to need this law to protect them are, of course, the parasites. And now, furthermore, to say that it doesn't discriminate against anybody, well, of course it discriminates against somebody. Because, let's say you have a disabled, religious, transsexual, pregnant woman who's half black, and she wants to rent an apartment. But the people who rent the apartments out don't want to rent it to her because she's a tranny or she's pregnant or she's half black or for whatever reason. Okay, So the law, the government, 
the bureaucrats, the police, the politicians, under authority concocted for them by Proposition 1, which is some words written on a piece of paper, will come along and force the people who own the apartment complex to rent the apartment to this woman. So the people who rent out the apartment complex, who own it, who manage it, are being discriminated against. They want a particular thing to happen. They don't want this woman to live there, but they're being forced to allow the woman to live there. So the idea that now you may argue, well, it's wrong for. I'm not saying I'm not even making the argument that it's right or wrong because, as we'll find out later, as we read through these articles from these newspapers, right and wrong don't really matter. So I'm not saying they're right or they're wrong. I'm saying that they're discriminated against. They're not getting what they want. They want a particular thing. Let's say that you've got some members of the Ku Klux Klan. They want to take some black people and they want to hang the black people from tree limbs with ropes by their necks until they die. Okay, If you stop the Klan members from doing that, well, you're discriminating against them. Again, I'm not saying is it right or wrong. I'm pointing out that it's discrimination. And to say that you're not affording special privilege. Well, of course you're affording special privilege. And it, you're discriminating against the Klan, and you're giving privileges to the black people who admittedly don't want to be hung from the neck by a tree. I mean, who does, right? But you're discriminating against somebody. You're giving privileges to somebody else. You're doing it with the force of the government. Not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying that the idea that this does not afford special privileges is, of course, a lie. And the people most likely to need these privileges would, of course, be the parasites. The other thing about this is it's going to protect people from discrimination based on all this other shit like age. So does that mean people who are 17 years old can now buy tobacco and alcohol? Well, no, of course not. So there's still going to be discrimination in some categories based on age. It's all nonsense, people. It's all nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, this is some good nonsense. Where's my martini? Mm. Ah. Randy, is it hot in here or is that just me? <laughs> we know the answer to that one, don't we? Hang on. Whoop. Okay. Don't everybody get excited. I'm going to strip down. Oh, yeah. Ooh, damn. Pretty sexy when I do that strip tease. Ooh, I got some stuff about strip teasing coming up for the cast. All right. This is a paid advertisement. I don't know what newspaper this came out of, do I? Oh, no, Houston Chronicle. My mother cut this out and sent this to me. This is hilarious. Paid advertisement. Attention, multi-millionaires who love this country, tired of the way it is being managed, and want to do something about it. Okay, that's bad grammar. It should say, attention, multi-millionaires who love this country, are tired of the way it is being managed, and want to do something about it. So first of all, these people are trying to appeal to multi-millionaires with their paid advertisement, but it never occurred to them to proofread their work. If you are a conservative, Democrat, Independent, or Republican, the USA needs you. Aww. America was founded by great men who wanted to live free from tyranny and oppression and set up a government to ensure it would be just that. Until, of course, George Washington decided to use the military to go out and hunt down people who were manufacturing whiskey because they were competing with his business model. So that's me getting distracted. All right, let me focus. Somewhere along the way, that idea had been taken over by a spy secular progressive liberals who would change our great nation into a socialist welfare state. This decline in our basic system of beliefs must end now. Oh, it must. Must it? Must it really? I bet it must not. What can you do? Simply take a page out of Donald J. Trump's playbook and get involved in seeking public office at your local, state, and national level. 
More importantly, finance your campaign out of your own pocket so you will not be beholden to any lobbyist or special interest group. Now, of course, anybody who can afford to finance their campaign out of their own pocket is already beholden to special interest groups and other such things because these days, that's more or less the only way you can become rich. There are certainly people out there who work hard and become rich by working hard, but to a large extent, rich people are a product of being born into wealth and having friends who have wealth. It's an oligarchy. It really has become that way. And, of course, when the left-wing statists point out that it's an oligarchy, I mean, they're right about this. The problem, of course, is that their solutions aren't actually solutions. They see a, they see the idea that you bring down the oligarchy by raising taxes on the rich people, because rich people, of course, can't find tax loopholes and all this other stuff. <laughs> God, right. That doesn't work. The way you bring down the oligarchy is, of course, you eliminate all the aspects of the state that prop the oligarchy up, right? Anytime a rich person loses some large amount of money, they get some kind of a bailout. Anytime a CEO fucks up a corporation, the corporation gets a bailout. We no longer need career politicians. As Senator Tom Coburn, Republican, stated, quote, politicians make decisions that benefit themselves rather than the country, unquote. Huh, really? No shit. We have compiled a list of some of these major changes at the national level for you to consider. We've made a list of things for you to do. So we want you multimillionaires out there. We want you to run for office. And here's what we want you to do. Okay. Your help as a truly independent Republican or Democrat will ensure its success. Now, of course, there's no, not really any particular such thing as a independent Republican or Democrat because if you're running under the guise under the the wing under the if you're running within the system of the Republican or the Democrat Party I'm not really sure how independent you can possibly be all right so here we go here's the things they want you to consider doing when you run for office and pay for it yourself because you're a multimillionaire Domestic policies. Secure the southern border and make English the official language of the United States. Okay. You can't fucking secure the border because the border is huge. The way you secure the border is you just stop giving free shit to people who come across the border wanting free shit. And you allow people who come across the border who actually just want to work for a living, you allow them people to work for a living. See, I don't even have to be grammatically correct anymore. It doesn't matter. This is a paid advertisement directed at multimillionaires. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Right? Boom. Border. Secured. Eliminate all the handouts. Eliminate all the welfare. Eliminate all the privileges and all this other shit. And if people do come across the border from another country and they get a job and somebody pays them and they create value for that person and get money in return, good for them. There you go. Border. Secured. Done. Make English the official language. Well, all you have to do is just not have a state. If the official language will be whatever fucking language people speak. The reason English is not the official language now is because the government prints everything in Spanish. If people want to print things in Spanish, they can. In an actual anarcho-capitalist paradise, you could be whatever fucking language you want to be. But the official language will be the language everybody fucking speaks. We don't need a law for this. You just need to shut the fuck up. Okay, number two, repeal and replace Obamacare. Okay, repeal Obamacare, okay, but replace Obamacare. Really? And what exactly are we replacing Obamacare with? Number three, build up the armed forces and improve veteran services. Hmm. Well, what if we don't build up the armed forces? What if we stop killing people? But they're going to attack us. No, no, they're not. They're really not. Nobody out there is coming to attack us. It's okay. Everybody take a deep breath. And, of course, veteran services. Well, veteran services are run by the government. 
just like Obamacare. What could possibly be wrong with that, right? All right, number four, close the Department of Education. My mother made sure to underline this for me so I wouldn't miss it because out of everything on here, this is the one thing that actually makes sense. Yeah, let's close the Department of Education and get the U.S. government out of our state education. Yes, closing the Department of Education sounds like a wonderful fucking idea. Never going to happen. International policies. Number one, destroy ISIS and its affiliates. Well, good luck on that. Or, we just stop killing people in other countries and they'd stop killing us. Number two, rein in Iran and stop its nuclear aspirations. Okay, Iran is not a person. Iran is a fictitious line drawing on a map. Iran doesn't have aspirations, but I think you mean the government. And again, just... How are you going to do this? This is delusional shit. Reavow our relationship with Israel. I like that the word relationship in this sentence is capitalized. Yeah, you know, fuck Israel. It just it, it's not. It, this is this thing that these conservative Republicans are always dredging up. Israel, Israel, it, Israel's not our fucking problem, dude. Let Israel do what the fuck Israel wants. It is just this renew, reavow, reavow our relationship with Israel. Fuck Israel. And number four, make China, North Korea, and Russia fear and respect the USA. Ah, again, notice the emphasis on fear. Because, of course, that's the only thing a statist can understand. I've talked about this before. I did the entire four-part series. Why statism is based on fear. Why should we try? Why we? The royal we. What's the point of trying to get the politicians who make up the governments of other countries to fear us? That's not really beneficial. Furthermore, how exactly do you arrive at creating this fear? Are we going to bomb them? Are we going to threaten them and not bomb them? I mean, there's nothing worse than a threat that has no teeth behind it. That's just, that makes everybody look like an idiot. Please consider the above, and remember the vast majority of Americans will support these ideas and your candidacy. Thank you, and may God bless you and the United States of America. Anonymous. Not the anonymous like the hacker group, but the person who paid for this wanted to be anonymous. Ignorance. Ignorance opinion. This is a letter from somebody named Jason McInnes also from the Houston Chronicle. Quote, regarding Republican vaccine debate has phys physicians despairing, so Donald Trump believes that childhood vaccines cause autism. The word believes is in quotes, as it should be. And this, in a nutshell, is my problem with the GOP. Somehow the GOP has morphed into a party where it is acceptable to be anti-science. Reality is not open to interpretation. It is not a matter of opinion. Whether or not Donald Trump or Mike Huckabee or George Bush believe in gravity or thermodynamics or global warming does not affect reality. And this is true. And the fact that people like you believe in global warming also does not affect reality, which is that the climate has been changing ever since the Earth has existed. And it's not something that started 30 years ago or how long has it been since Ronald Reagan was elected? I don't know. 80s to 90s? Your belief, it's amazing how the stupid people can sit here and say like, well, it doesn't matter what you believe, it's reality. These same people, of course, completely fucking deny evolution, natural selection, and most importantly, economics. These are people who think that the government can create jobs, and they really believe that. These are people who think that Obama has saved the economy. These are people who think that Obamacare will work. These are people who think that if you force people to buy a product, 
the product must be good. Alright, back to reading this letter. However, they have somehow come to believe that their ignorance is a valid point of view. It is not. Ignorance is not the other side. Now remember, this is a left-wing statist writing this. This, this is the person who cares about freedom of speech, because they'll all tell you how much they care about freedom of speech. Okay, let me get back to reading. Holocaust deniers are not entitled to their opinion about their side of the story. People who believe that the earth is flat or that Obama is a Muslim do not deserve to be heard. Ignorance is not an opinion, it is simply ignorance. So yes, you see, you're not entitled to an opinion if your opinion is deemed ignorance. But of course, the fact that people like Jason McInnes are completely ignorant of economics, well, that doesn't matter because you see, ignorance is not an opinion unless you're the ignorant person. In that case, ignorance, totally fucking okay. Speaking of some ignorance and stupidity and annoying shit, Ted Cruz leads charge to remove Sanger's bust from gallery. A group of conservative congressmen, including nine from Texas, is joining with U.S. Senator Ted Cruz to demand the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. remove a bust of Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger, a woman who, of course, wanted to use birth control to get rid of black people. My question is, I don't have a problem with her wanting to get rid of people who are inferior. I have a big fan of natural selection and evolution. My question is, why does the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. even exist? Could we, we, the royal we, be spending that money on something else? I mean, why is this a thing? Who gives a shit? Teen was beaten to death with belt and cord at church. Now, New Hartford, New York. Ah, oh, fucking Yankees. Nothing, nothing better than a motherfucking Yankee. This happened up in Yankee land in New York. A mother and father whipped their 19-year-old son in church with an electrical cord and what appeared to be a belt during, an all, during a deadly all-night spiritual counseling session triggered by his desire to leave the fold, according to, a witness testimony, according to witness testimony and Police Friday. Church deacon Daniel Irwin testified that he peered through the doorway window in the sanctuary at one point during the more than 12-hour ordeal at the Word of Life Christian Church and saw Lucas Leonard bleeding and in apparent agony. Quote, Lucas was rolling himself back and forth on the floor and making a sustained monotone moaning, unquote, Irwin said. Within hours, the young man would be dead, killed by blows inflicted by his parents, sister, and fellow church members, authorities said. His mother told police the group took turns hitting him and holding him down. Ah, Yankees. Yes, it's always fun to make fun of religious people in the South because, you know, they shake snakes. And, of course, we also know Southerners don't have any front teeth and they have sex with their sisters and everything. They actually do, but that's only in Arkansas. But, ah, yes, nothing more amusing than religion up in the Yankee land. Yes. Dear Abby, oh dear Abby, there are no words to express how disappointed I am in the education kids receive now and still graduate with honors. I was at the grocery store a short time ago. Two young ladies working there just completed their freshman year at the local college. One of them had been on the honor roll all through high school. I bought four packages of gravy mix that were on sale. Four packages for a dollar. As the cashier rang it up, I noticed that she had entered them at 44 cents a piece. <laughs> math. Math hurts. That's why I'm a journalism major. I don't have to do math. When I brought it to her attention, she asked the other cashier if that was right. She asked, quote, 44 cents? Wouldn't that be four for a dollar? Unquote. The other one picked up a calculator to find the answer. <laughs> Oh, oh, smartest generation ever. Speaking of people who aren't very smart, let's talk about my mother for a minute. Because I'm an equal opportunity bastard here. I just, I tell the truth. That's why I'm so fucking brilliant. Well, that and because I have a martini. But that's why I'm also really good looking. That's not the martini, that's genetics. 
Mm. I just tell the truth. I don't care about people's feelings, and I don't care who I have to fucking mutilate in order to tell the truth. Right? I make fun of whoever needs to be made fun of, regardless of how much I agree with them, like them, am related to them, whatever. Article. Experts. Colon. Billy the Kid photo worth $5 million. A $2 photograph of the outlaw Billy the Kid brought, bought at a Fresno, California junk shop five years ago is apparently the holy grail of Western Americana and worth $5 million, experts say. This is a photograph of Billy the Kid and his gang playing croquet outside of a small structure. Looks like a house. My mother, because, you know, she's a liberal Democrat, she's a fucking intellectual, she wrote on here, this is ridiculous. No photo is worth that amount. Now, this is called ignorance. This is why, this is why we need more natural selection. Not just with getting the DNA out of the gene pool, but with actually eliminating the stupid people from our society and causing them so much pain that perhaps they will come to an understanding of reality and stop believing bullshit. So my mother believes that no photograph is worth $5 million. Now, as I have explained before on this podcast, value for anything, value for a person's time, let's say I want to get a job and I want you to pay me by the hour, or let's say I want to sell you a photograph, value of anything is ultimately dependent upon, is ultimately determined by the person who's going to purchase it. So to say that no photograph is worth five million dollars, well, if there is somebody out there willing to pay $5 million for the photograph, well, then it is worth $5 million. Now, I know this is hard to understand. And this is why you have these fast food workers who think they should get $15 an hour because they think they can decide what they are worth to McDonald's. But of course, they can't. Okay. Is the photo worth $5 million? Well, it's not worth $5 million until somebody pays $5 million for it. But it might be worth $5 million. The lack of understanding of how economics works. Though, you know, certainly the person selling something has some influence on what the value is in the sense that the person doing the selling can agree or disagree to the transaction, right? I can assert that my skills as a counterperson at McDonald's are worth $100. I can assert that. But if McDonald's doesn't want to pay me $100 an hour to ask people if they'd like fries with that, well, then I'm not worth that. And McDonald's can say, we think you're worth $9 an hour. We'll give you $9 an hour. I can disagree and I can not exchange my labor and my time for the $9 an hour and thus reject their assertion of my value. So I have some influence on what my value is, but ultimately the final arbitrator of value is the person who is purchasing, the person who is paying for something. And left-wing statist commie socialist morons like my mother can't understand this because they're entitled and they think that they have privileges and vagina. Speaking of things people don't understand, tongues of bees affected as climate changes. Global warming and evolution are reshaping the bodies of some American bumblebees, a new study finds. The tongues of two Rocky Mountain species of bumblebees are about one quarter shorter than they were 40 years ago. What I want to know is who was running around 40 years ago measuring the tongues of bumblebees, but okay. 
evolving that way because climate change altered the buffet of wildflowers they normally feed from, according to a study published Thursday in the Journal of Science. Now, how do they know the flowers changed because of and only because of global warming? They have no way of knowing that. Nice try. Oh yeah, global warming doesn't exist, by the way. It's climate change. In one of these species, the tongue had been half the size of the bee's body, but because the flowers where the long tongue is required have dwindled, the bees didn't need that much tongue. <laughs> Let's get a little pornographic now. The bees didn't need that much tongue. No, but she did. Oh yeah. Keeping <laughs> long tongue. Uh, keep, keeping long tongues requires bees use more energy, so the bees evolved a shorter tongue. Because <laughs> size matters. <laughs> evolved a shorter tongue that allows them to sample a wider variety of flowers. Okay, see, this is called evolution. This is what global warming wackos deny. They're, oh my God, look, the bees' tongues are changing because of global warming. Well, no, the flowers available to them are changing. And with the shorter tongue, apparently they can access a wider variety of flowers than they could before, which is what it says here. That's called evolution. Can you imagine the global warming wackos like shitting their pants because, well, giraffes are evolving longer necks because of global warming. It's called evolution, you fucking dipshits. And it's what we need more of, not less, because evolution happens with natural selection. Natural selection would get you out of the gene pool. Mm. USA Today. I'm not even sure how the USA Today can even be called a newspaper. I love this headline. FBI. Shootings were an act of terrorism. Well, of course they were, because if they weren't terrorism, nobody would be scared. We have to keep everybody afraid. Obama says, and it must be true because Obama said it, Obama says climate change is a threat military can't fix. Whoa, Obama's such a fucking genius. He's figured out that the military can't fix global warming. Wow, this guy, he's a real fucking thought leader. President Obama is sticking with his view that climate change is a global threat on the order of terrorism, in part because groups such as the Islamic State will be defeated in traditional ways, and also in part because Obama, as a politician who wants to keep people afraid, needs to compare everything to terrorism. Right? Everything is terrorism. There's nothing in the fucking universe that isn't terrorism. Quote, but if you start seeing the oceans rise by five, six, seven feet, unquote, and if weather patterns change to where, quote, bread baskets to the world suddenly can no longer grow food, then you're seeing the kind of crisis we can't deal with through the deployment of the Marines, unquote, Obama said in an interview on CBS this morning. Gosh, whoa. He's such an enlightened being. Mm. And it's such a good martini. God, I'm fucking good at making martinis. Good at other things too, but that's what she said. Quote, we can't deal with it through pouring money at it. Unquote, Obama added. Now that's interesting. We can't solve global warming? by pouring money at it. Really, so does this mean Obama is going to stop funding global warming research? Does this mean that he's going to stop the government funding of all these fucking companies with the green shit and the windmills and all this other stuff? Really, we can't, there's a problem that cannot be solved by throwing money at it. Really? I don't think I believe that. I'm pretty fucking sure the solution for global warming is to spend more goddamn money. 
because that's the only solution the state can ever fucking understand. The idea that Obama saying you can't solve global warming with the military, the idea that that right there is even news, is an excellent illustration of how fucking stupid people are. As for terrorism, which we have to get back to because, again, it's important to keep everybody afraid. As for terrorism, Obama, who is seeking a global climate change agreement, said, quote, we're going to get, unquote, the Islamic State. We're going to get them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get them. <laughs> quote, they will be defeated. There will be ongoing efforts to disrupt the world order from terrorists, from rogue states, from cyber attacks. There's always going to be some bad people out there who are trying to do bad things, and we have to be vigilant in going after them." Unquote. So apparently Obama is going to be going after the government. Because the last time I checked, most of the bad things happening in the United States. Sure, there's, there's this other stuff going on. There's religious wackos up in New York beating their own children to death because their children want to leave the church. Sure, there's shit like that happening. But most of the stupid shit in this country is happening because of the government. I mean, most of the people in the United States who are inside of cages are there because of the government. Obama's critics have mocked his efforts to equate climate change with terrorism, as they should because it's fucking hilarious. Of course, neither of them really exist. Climate change is something that's always happened since the Earth has existed. And then terrorism is simply an abstract concept. So in a way, neither of them exist as a problem in the sense that Obama wants you to think. Obama wants you to look at terrorism and climate change as things that can be fixed and eliminated if, of course, you throw enough money. Because I guarantee you, if you say to Obama, okay, I want you to fix, to solve, to end global warming, but you don't get to spend any money, he will tell you that's impossible. So the notion that Obama would say, we can't deal with this by pouring money at it, is absolute nonsense. Donald Trump, the front runner for the Republican presidential nomination. Is Donald Trump really the front runner? I don't know. I don't keep up with this shit. Doesn't matter. Hillary Clinton's going to win. I've already said that. She's going to be the best thing for the corporations and the military industrial complex ever. Donald Trump called one of, called one of the president's comments, quote, one of the dumbest statements I've ever heard in politics, unquote. Asked about Trump's criticism, Obama said, quote, Mr. Trump should run back a tape or quote on some of the stuff he said, unquote. It sounds like two retarded children arguing in the sandbox, except that, of course, retarded children would be smarter than Trump and Obama and could have a more civilized discourse. Said Obama, quote, nearly all of the world's scientists and most of its political, oh no, this isn't the quote yet, sorry. Said Obama, this is paraphrasing, not quoting. Said Obama, nearly all of the world's scientists and most of its political parties see climate change as, quote, a really urgent problem, unquote. Oh, it's really urgent. You know, it's, it's really, really urgent. Speaking of stupid people in the public who are kept afraid as often as possible, the term mass shooting often confuses people. This is still the USA Today, which even for newspapers and journalism majors is a fucking joke. There are various definitions resulting in dizzying statistics. Depending on how you're counting, the attack in which 14 people died in San Bernardino, California on Wednesday was the 22nd mass shooting this year, or it was one of 
more than 300 in a near daily epidemic. The article which I was going to read, which I'm just not going to read now, just goes on about how there is no actual definition of what is or is not a quote unquote mass shooting. How many times have I talked on this podcast about nebulous language? This is why they say, like, terrorism. It doesn't mean anything. The word terrorism has a meaning if you look it up in the dictionary. But it's nebulous. You can take terrorism and apply it to anything, right? Climate change. What happens, right? If it's hotter, that's climate change. If it's colder, that's climate change. If the bee's tongues get shorter, climate change. If the bee's tongue gets longer, climate change. If there's more hurricanes than last year, climate change. Less hurricanes than last year, climate change. It's a word. The word climate change, if the climate change, look them up in the dictionary. They have meaning, but they don't mean anything in this context. just like the masterpiece that was Obama's campaign. What did he run on? Hope and change. Both of those words have meanings if you look them up in the dictionary, but they don't mean anything. If you elect me, I'm going to bring change. What does that mean? I mean, Adolf Hitler brought change. Joseph Stalin brought change. FDR brought change. Everybody who gets elected brings change. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. And the same thing with the term mass shootings. Mass shootings doesn't mean anything. The word mass has a definition. Shooting has a definition. You can create a definition for mass shootings. You can create criteria for that, but those criteria don't exist. Anybody in the government, in the media, can simply call anything mass shooting anytime they want to, and they do so in the need, in the attempt, in the desire, in the purpose to create fear because, of course, statism is driven by fear. The health of Obamacare. Blah, 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 a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. I picked up a copy of the Wall Street Journal. Okay, so there's a bunch of blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, the way Obamacare was promoted to the American people has made this discussion difficult to have. The law was oversold in several ways. Whoa, hold it. A law was oversold? No fucking way. That's never happened before. Premiums haven't gone down. Many people who liked their old health plans haven't been able to keep them. The health benefits from expanding coverage have been elusive. And the macroeconomic consequences of the law have been negative. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the disincentives created by Obamacare, so that the subsidies are phased out as beneficiaries' incomes rise, will reduce the number of hours worked by 1.5 to 2 percent from 2017 to 2024. There's some more blah 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 blah, and then we get to the final paragraph. The real question at this point. <laughs> Now, let's get to the real question in the final paragraph. You can tell it's real journalism made. Well, if this is the real question, this is not, and this is not an op-ed piece. This is supposedly fact-based reporting. This is not in the op-ed section. Why would you get to the real question in the final paragraph? It's, if it's the real question, shouldn't you have been addressing that throughout the entire article? The real question at this point is not whether critics or supporters of Obamacare are right. No, no, no. See, being right is not the real question because see, being right is not important. The concept of being right or wrong, see, that's a social construct like gender. It's a social construct designed to oppress women and minorities and transgendered people. It doesn't matter who's right. No, no, no. The real question, the real question is, 
Rather, who will have the political courage and tenacity to confront the difficult policy problems that we still face? Well, first of all, I don't understand why there are still policy problems because I thought Obamacare fixed everything. I thought Obamacare provided health care for everybody. So you're saying Obamacare didn't work. I, I think that might be the real question here. The idea that the real question is who's going to have the tenacity and courage? Who is going to come down as the next Messiah? Now that's not the real question. That's not the real question at all. The real question is how can you bozos continue to think that being right or wrong about economics, which is math, doesn't matter? No, it does matter. The fact that health care has health care expenses, the cost of health care has gone up. That matters. The fact that people can't keep their insurance plans even though they were told they could, that matters. It does matter. <coughs> Fed's unsolved puzzle, how to deflate bubbles. Still from the Wall Street Journal, which is supposedly a real newspaper written by intelligent people for intelligent people. Okay. Listen to this. This is going to be the most stunning thing you've ever fucking heard in your life. Federal Reserve officials participating in a war game exercise this year came to a disturbing conclusion. Six years after the financial crisis ended, the central bank remained ill-equipped to quell the kind of dangerous asset bubbles that destabilized the savings and loan industry during the late 1980s, tech stocks in the 1990s, and housing in the mid-2000s. Oh my God! Guess what? The, the government can't control the economy. They just figured this out. This is the most baffling, terrifying shit I've ever heard. Did you know the government can't control the economy? You know, the, the economy, you know, the, the economy, the financial decisions of every single human on the planet Earth and the consequences of those decisions can't be controlled by the government. Holy shit. Who? Who, my friends? Who fucking knew? Oh, yeah. I did. No, no, the Fed can't prevent the bubbles. The, way you, the only way you can prevent the bubbles is by not bailing them out when they bubble up and pop. Let them fail. That's called free market economics. Free market economics works because it's just like natural selection.